The Squint, a broken realm story. Skagrot screwed up his eyes and rubbed the heels of his scrawny palms into the sockets, trying his best to massage away some of the throbbing pain that pulsed through his head. Thump, thump, thump. It went, as insistent as if there was something inside his fungus-addled brain pan. Something big was coming. Something that was just dying to shatter his skull and break out an explosion of gribbly bits, like the spewer bursts of a head crack of fungus. It put him in an excessively bad mood. The bawling, raucous din of the marching horde wasn't helping his headache. Fingering the pebble-like glimmerings in the hidden pocket of his robes, purchased at great cost in Quicksilver and worn smooth by his constant rubbing, he stopped and took in the vast army crossing the vista of the Gurish hinterlands. Tens of thousands of orcs, of every conceivable breed, shape, and shade of green spread from east to west, each dead set on unleashing their own brand of violence on the Humi city at the march's end. Amongst them were not only Skagrot's fellow Moon Clan shuffling black triangles teeming with ochre dust, but also grim scuttle lads on their giant black arachnids, stupefied trogoths caught up in the romp, growl-bellied ogres, and even hundred-foot-tall mega-gargants that blotted out the sun as they passed. He had plans for that latter contingent, but for now, he had to bide his time. In truth, he was not enjoying it one bit. For a time, the mood of violent joy had been contagious, and Skagrot had found himself caught up in it, grinning like the bad moon itself until the muscles on the back of his head hurt from leering. But it had been weeks since they had set off, and they were still thousands of miles away from their destination. The constant din of the greenskin march, a fizz of waw energy, always on the brink of exploding into a frenzy of violence, was playing on his nerves something chronic. If it weren't for the fact that Gordrak was at the head of this sprawling column, the whole thing would have collapsed in on itself long ago. But no one wanted to risk the wrath of the Fist of Gork. Least of all Skagrot. After all, he'd gone through to get the giant lummox on his side. Boss! shattered one of his runners, a snarl fang riding Grot by the name of Spidey, who came up pounding on his growling steed in a blurring puff of dust. Boss, your nutters are off again, doing this. The rider made a face, sticking his tongue out and waggling his ears. Dead funny to watch, but one of them's spewing out black smoke from his eyes, and it stinks funny. Skagrot gave a shuddering sigh, turning back and making for the cage full of captives he had kept back near the end of the column. All the while, the enduring, the jeers and accusations of the orc stomping past him. Some glorious leader he made, here in Gur, without his pointy throne. At least back in Scrap a Spill, the bigger greenies knew to treat him with something approaching respect. The cage of Scrap was ugly as sin. All sharp edges and rust juddering along six mismatched wheels with a persistent metallic squeak that did Skagrot's head in, but was absolutely necessary to keep the seers within from gathering their wits. A great wooden effigy of the Bad Moon had been chained atop to the cage to keep its inhabitants cowed into submission. And most of the time, it worked. Skagrot had ordered the portable prison to be dragged around with him ever since he set off to join forces with Gordrak, goading his most trusted Trogoths to push it through the chromatic realm gate under Bigga Hill and having them haul it all the way here in the middle of Gurish nowhere. He told the lads it was to keep his hand when it came to torture, but the truth was that the seers and prophets inside were invaluable for glimpsing future events. He was unable to visit the fungal asylum under Scrap a Spill on the march, so instead he'd brought the best bits with him. Those that hadn't been already claimed by the fungus-riddled walls of that place, that is, and Spidey had been right. The inhabitants were moaning, gibbering, and gurning as their bony hands gripped the bars. One of them was shuddering on the floor, thin trails of black smoke trailing from his eyes. Clearly they'd had a bit too much of Gordrak's wah as well. Shut it! screamed the Loon King. Shut your bleeding mouths or I'll slit your guts wide open. You only speak when I tells ya. He marched up to the cage and jumped onto the running board, giving the captives profits as much evil eye as he could muster. They all shrank back. The dark tidesmen from Shyish, always gibbering about the secrets of Loongast, the Azerite in his tattered robes, constellations of silver thread glinting amongst the dirt. Even the gaunt elf, 
blind and hideous since Skagorot poked his eyes out. All but one. A towering, tattered-robed git stood fast. The swirling pink and blue tattoos on his face seemed to writhe and glow from within as he clutched the least wonky of the cage's bars and met Skagrod's gaze without faltering. The seer of the Crystal Isle, he called himself. He snarled and opened his mouth to speak. Skagrod punched his teeth in, his whole fist in there just about, and he let go of the glimmerings he had been clutching in his clammy palm. He yanked his hand back amongst the blood and saliva, leaving three of the strange pebble things in the giddish seer gob, and the rest clattered to the cage's uneven tin floor. Choke on that, said Skagrot, watching with a great deal of satisfaction as the fancy seer started to shudder, rattling the cage's bars and frothing at the lips. Get that down your neck, you mouthy git, and puke your secrets back out nice and fast. The seer gave vent to a rising moan. Starting so low it sounded like a trogoth's rumble and reaching a piercing shriek like the boiling of a brugit kettle. He slammed into the cage bars as if pushed by a giant, invisible hand. His face, a hand's breadth from Skagrot's pointy nose, and stared furiously at him. One wide-eyed spiraling pink, the other blue. Those eyes seemed to grow larger and larger until Skagrot felt he was sinking into them, drowning in them. The seer of the Crystal Isle was no longer a barefooted, tattered mendicant, but a towering magister, bedecked in scintillating silver and fluted armor plates, somehow outside the cage and simmering with anger. He had not two eyes, but three, one dead center on his forehead. That new eye burned with such intensity that Skagorot had to narrow his eyes as if looking straight into the Hyacian sun, but he could not tear his gaze away. He felt his soul wither, like a bare hand held in the mouth of a furnace. Larger and larger grew the sorcerer, his mouth opening impossibly wide to spill avalanches of pebble-like glimmering. You see prophecy, wretch? You go to your death, he boomed. The gate will shatter, the earth will tear, the sky shall eat the storm, and the serpent's tide will rise. The changer's riddle is born anew by the splitting mirror of the Dark Prince. Skagorot cowered, mind aflame. Back at the spill, he had been in two minds about caging this one, but the magnitude of his error was only now becoming clear. He was a prey creature trapped without hope of escape by its natural predator. His limbs shivered uncontrollably and he sank down, staring at the still-growing terror of feathers, robes, and back-jointed limbs that was unfurling above him to eat him whole. And there, over its shoulder, was the moon. It was whispering something. Skagrot strained to hear it, leaning in, leaning up, getting taller somehow, getting closer, swelling with power as he focused on the moon even as it shrugged off its chains. You what? said the Loon King his voice that of a million troglodytes all shouting at once. You bleeding what? He was a giant now, far taller than the gargants that had receded into the gray murk of the column. Nothing more than a backdrop against that which really mattered, the chaos worshiper who had dared attack him. Skagorot gathered the moon's chains and gnarled in a fist-sized boulder and heaved. With great effort, he swung it around and around, his heels tracing erratic spirals in the dust as he gathered momentum. The moon effigy crackled and laughed as it swooshed through the glittering air, a trail of sickly yellow-green fire from the craters. The feathered titan reached out, nine taloned limbs reaching to rip his soul apart. But this time Skagorot was ready. Letting go of his lunar wrecking ball, it struck the apparition right in the guts, blasting the horrible thing apart in a million shards of shattering crystal. The bad moon gave a triumphant whoop, and suddenly it hung in the f and suddenly it hung in the firmament once more, cold, distant, and silent as the grave. Skagrot shook himself as if waking from a nightmare and steeled himself to peer inside the cage once more. The seer of the Crystal Isle had now become nothing more than a shapeless mass, a pillar of glowing, pulsating fungus with limb-like appendages growing around the bars of the cage, a mist of gray-green spores slowly dissipating around him. Skagorot looked up. The effigy of the Bad Moon atop the cage stared down at him, same as before, but its grin seemed a little wider, and its chains had disappeared entirely. Um, said the Loon King, er, right. Let that be a lesson to the rest of you. 
mess with the boss and you get you, you get shroomified. Skagrot tried to shake his staff threateningly, stumbled a little instead, and righted himself with as much dignity as he could muster. Robes damp with sweat, he made his way back towards the front of the column. Some semblance of order had been restored, thank Mork, but he wasn't quite sure how. All right, friends, I'm not going to lie to you. This one's kind of an out there story. Um, I like it, to be first and frank. If you don't know much about the Gloom Spike Gets, first of all, Skagrot is like the big named character within the GG army. Um, and I like the fact that they made sure to point out that all the different elements of the Gloom Spike were there. You got the Spider Fang, um, obviously the normal, the Moon Clan, you got the Trogoths, all that kind of stuff. And of course, if you don't know, um, Skagrod is like their, the ultimate leader. His base is back in Scrap a Spill in the Realm of Metal, Chaman. Now, one thing that we covered during their lore week, which I'll leave a link to down below, is this idea that he is renowned as being this incredible prophet. He can predict the Bad Moon's location, which is extremely hard to do. Like, most leaders only do it once or twice, and he's done it repeatedly. And the reason that he's able to do that is because he has this secret chamber underneath Scrap a Spill that's heavily guarded. No one else knows about it. But in there, he captures a bunch of mages, wizards, prophets, seers, scryers, anything like that. Anyone who has any potential form of foresight or, you know, magic, you know, intuitive, you know, knowledge, that kind of stuff. And he basically poisons them, drugs them, and just all the wise torches them in the most horrific kind of like a Cronenberg horror kind of way. And essentially he pulls the secrets, he pulls these visions out from them. And so that's how he's able to predict things. Of course, nobody else knows about this. They just think that he is the end all be all of the, the, the bad moons favored. And so when he's on the road, he has to bring his prophets with him, which is a very cool thing. Now, the character that he's talking to in the back, if you didn't quite catch it, uh, definitely he picked up at some point a chaos sorcerer dedicated to Zinch uh, is kind of what I'm picking up from this. Uh, and the visions that that put into his head really messed with him in a weird way. Yes, he's a wizard, but that chaos influence, I'm getting the sense, really kind of like tempered some of his vision. And that vision here, I'm going to read it one more time. The gate will shatter, the earth will tear, the sky shall eat the storm, and the serpent's tide will rise. The changer's riddle is born anew by the splitting mirror of the dark prince. All right, I'm, I'm going to give you my interpretation of this, okay? First of all, the gates will shatter. Um, that could be uh, two things. It could be the gates of Azir. It could also be the gates of Excelsius, which we know... Uh, Gordrak has his eyes set on it, and we're actually part of an army that's moving with Gordrak, presumably, to the gates of Excelsius. Gordrak went and got a god beast skull that he's using as a battering ram to get into the city. So that's a literal gate, whereas the gates of Azir, you know, they're kind of everywhere. It's more of a figurative thing. They're, they're barred up magically, that kind of stuff. The Earth Will Tear is an interesting one because the only thing I can think of with that is like, hmm, broken realms, but I don't have anything to go with that. I can't think of a specific thing where Earth is tearing. The sky shall eat the storm and the serpent's tide will rise. That's an interesting one because it could go a lot of different ways. I mean, obviously it's easy to say you know, the storm cast have obviously kind of trademarked uh, storms in general when it comes to imagery. But the idea of the sky, it could be anything from uh, a natural occurrence, you know, something like the Shyish uh, Necroquake, which is just kind of encapsulates everything, right? It just kind of came from the void from Shyish everywhere else. It could also be something like the Seraphon, who literally use constellations to navigate and predict the future. There's a lot of ways that can go. The serpent's tide will rise, though, is interesting because that's kind of imagery that's both used for the Daughters of Cain and Slanesh, and technically also the Seraphon. Again, I do not know. And the last line here, the changer's riddle is born anew by the splitting mirror of the Dark Prince. Now, what's interesting is the splitting mirror, um, I do believe, is in reference to Slanesh splitting in two. So there's one in prison, one's a protean form that we talked about in our last story. So the Changer's Riddle is born anew makes me think that Zinch is somehow orchestrating these plans in some way that he's going to come out in his mind on top. Those are just my theories. All in all, I'm really just excited to see this army moving towards Excelsius, uh, however you pronounce it. And I would just absolutely love to see that story in a Broken Realms, you know, epic battle scene at some point very soon. 
but I want to hear your theories. Again, I'm going to read it one more time and I want to hear it in the comments down below. The gates will shatter, the earth will tear, the sky shall eat the storm, and the serpent's tide will rise. The changer's riddle is born anew by the splitting mirror of the dark prince. All in all, there's just enough tidbits in there, like keywords that make you like have a few light bulb moments to make it interesting. But beyond that, I'm totally lost and confused. When it comes to these things, I'm not generally like a, look, I called it kind of guy. I'm, I'm more just like, I'm kind of like, you know, when you have like a beer cracked open and you have recline and you're just watching Jeopardy and you take a random pot shot guess and then you go, oh, I was right. That's more where I'm at, right? I don't need to be right. But it's a nice little surprise when it is. But I know there's people out there who read these books uh, and stories and stuff with the intention of like, they, they really want to know like mystery book reader type things where they're trying to piece together clues. So I want to hear your thoughts. What do you think the prophecy is about? Um, I absolutely love the story. I want to see Skagorot be an absolute beast uh, versus some Stormcast as well as Gordrak, obviously. And thank you all so much for watching and listening. And I look forward to hearing your thoughts on this in the comments down below. Happy Wargaming.